Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Jay Kirk here, bringing you a long overdue update on the reef tank. Uh, I've been looking back through my videos and realized it's been over uh, two months, actually, since you've gotten a good look at the tank. So, sorry about that. Uh, school started back up for me, so I've been kind of busy lately. But there are quite a few changes, obviously, in the past two months. So this will be a little bit longer video, kind of detailing everything that's going on. Um, first thing you'll notice is there is sand in the tank. Uh, it was bare bottom. Uh, for as long as I've had it set up, and I switched over to sand, uh, basically to keep some of the different uh, RAS species that I have now, which I'll show you guys. But um, you can see it's starting to get kind of that brown diatom algae film that uh, all new sand beds get as they're kind of um, breaking in um, in the tank. So no worries about that. My uh, my tail spot blenny actually likes to eat it. That's one of my new fish. You can see him up here. He also likes picking algae off the snail shells. <laughs> He's a cool little fish, but um, I've had him for a while. You can see the distinctive spot where he gets his name from back there on his tail. But he's also got these really cool, you can see him kind of black and orange racing stripes on his cheeks. Really, really a cool fish. Lots of personality. It's kind of really comical looking appearance. So if anybody has a chance to get one of these fish, I really recommend them. They're very cool little nano fish. But, uh, now he's actually quite fond of picking the brown diatom algae uh, off the sand, so he's a cool fish. But um, I'll get into the wrasses I have now. My favorite fish at the moment is this uh, radiant wrasse right here. You can see why he gets the name radiant. He's just absolutely stunning colors. Reddish maroon um, body, he's got a long white dorsal that goes the length of it, and then a bright yellow face with the... Uh, with orange and green stripes on it. So, beautiful fish, completely peaceful, very reef safe, and uh, he burrows in the sand. Um, the reason I have the sand bed is because at night it's really cool. They have very distinct and uh, regular sleep patterns. The moment the lights go out, they go down to the sand, they burrow right in, and they spend the rest of the night under the sand, and then when the lights come back on in the morning, they wake back up and come out again. So. Um, yeah, you need a sand bed with these types of wrasses, otherwise they won't feel comfortable. The next burrowing wrasse I have right there is a Melanaris wrasse. He's the biggest fish I got in the tank now. His colors are also really nice. He's kind of a bluish teal color with orange stripes. He's uh, really cool patterns. You can see kind of he's got like vertical stripes on his on the top part of his body too. Um, but he's pretty much established himself as a king of the tank now. He's not really aggressive, but uh, he will chase people now and then just to kind of let them know who's boss. But um, also reef safe, also burrows in the sand at night just like the Radiant Rass does. And as you can see, they are both just beautiful, beautiful fish. And then the third larger wrasse species I have up here is um, an African Exquisite Rass. These are different wrasse species. They don't burrow in the sand. He actually lives... Uh, in the rocks at night. He'll, you know, kind of wedge himself in the rocks and they have this cool kind of mucus cocoon that they, um, they spread around themselves at night. But he's a very active swimmer. As you can see, he likes to be more towards the top of the water. Um, at first I thought that was a sign of stress maybe, but I researched it and apparently they, um, in the wild, they eat species of plankton and other floating types of uh, food sources. So he spends a lot of time, a lot of his time at the top of the water looking for food. He eats like a pig. He's probably the the easiest um, fish to be fed. He accepts anything. These guys, the Radiant Wrasse and the Melanaris Wrasse, still haven't really been accepting pellets. Um, I like to feed new life spectrum pellets, but they've only been accepting frozen food, uh, which is fine. I know they're carnivores and they like more of a meaty type of food, but I'm trying to get them slowly weaned to also accept pellets. Um, another new wrasse species right here is the uh, Fairy Wrasse. He's actually a, let's see, I think it's called a Whip Fin Wrasse or something like that. A little bit smaller, um, but he's one of the, the fairy slash fast rat, uh, flasher wrasse family. He's being shy right now. Still have the red uh, firefish. My purple firefish is up here. Um, there he is. There's a good shot out of him. He's kind of a reddish orange with the white, um, white underbelly. Cool fish. He eats really good too. Um, there's Houdini down there. He's going to show off for you guys and bluff charge you. Yeah, sleeps under that rock. I think I think he was the happiest when I put the sand back in because he can start digging again. Um, but he dug his burrow right there, and um, still kicking it, still bright yellow. Um, 
but yeah, that's what the tank is looking like. I kind of moved back to a more um, linear, sort of rock wall type aquascape. Um, I don't know, I, I think I just lean or tend to gravitate more towards this type of look with the, with the rock in the tank, so I like it. Don't really have many new corals, they're still mostly zoanthids. You know, there's that one recordia right there, which is doing good. Um, this candy cane's got quite a few heads now. I don't really know how many anymore. But um, other than that, that red Monty Cat's do doing really good. It's kind of hard to tell what the light's hitting out, but it's um, kind of a pinkish color now. But it's growing, you can see um, it's getting ridges now. The other new big addition to the tank is the MP10. As you can see, I used to have, you know, one, I used to have a bunch of uh, power heads on that back wall. Took all those out because they were generating a lot of heat. So I took all those out of the tank and went uh, with the MP10 down here. I got the box. Awesome power head, you know, as you can see, it's got the, the motor on the outside and the uh, impeller on the inside. So no heat is generated into the tank water. Really an awesome power head. Down here you can see the uh, controller I got. Right now I've got it on a lagoon mode, so I don't have it too strong right now. But, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it's really an awesome, awesome um, investment in the tank. I'm glad I bought it. And it uh, puts out nice current. And it gets all the way to the end of the tank when you crank it up. The fish seem to like it. And um, it does a pretty good job of keeping my sand bed clean. Uh, so no complaints with that investment. I'll bring it down here and show you guys the sump now. Um, one of the best reasons about that, like I said, the heat generated. My, my tank was running a little bit hot at around like 82 degrees with all those power heads in the top. Uh, you know, you got the return pump down there. So with, with taking out all those power heads, I'm down to about 79 now, which is I'm a little bit more comfortable running. But here's the sump and my two resident bullies, um, I'll get to them later, but as you can see, the, uh, the catamorpha algae and the calerpa algae is just really gone insane in this refugium. Once again, it's the Ray 2 light growing all this algae. It's meant for planted tanks, but it does a great job of growing the algae, as you can see. But yeah, there's just a massive ball of algae back there. Some live rock down at the bottom. Got a little bit of die off, but overall, very healthy growing um, refugium section. My nitrates are basically zero, and um, yeah, it's doing a good job. Also still doing the air-driven protein skimmer. Once again, for people who don't think these work, you can see all the nasty gunk in there. Um, does a great job pulling it out of the water, and I'm happy with that. It's a nice investment. It's only like $40, but it, as you can see, does the job. Still run the filter sock. Um, chemical media still. There's, let's see if you can see it. Pyrogen right down here, and then some um, chemopyrolite for chemical. But um, the main reason that I like this tank down here, or this sump, is I have basically what I call the jail cells. <laughs> and cell number one is my clownfish, who has decided to start being a pain, really. Um, it's my fault because I, you know, I put quite a bit of fish up here in the in the display, and he was getting a little bit crowded, I think. And you start crowding. Um, aggressive fish, you know, they tend to get more aggressive to start protecting their turf. But uh, he was just abusing my uh, my African exquisite wrasse, so he's down here in cell number one, taking the time out. And in cell number two, we have the stark damselfish, who, despite everybody telling me he's one of the more peaceful damselfish, like all damselfish, he turned out to be an asshole. <laughs> oh man, it's just one of those things where, you know, you can try and say damsels will be peaceful all you want, but sooner or later they're going to turn into jerks. So he was kind of nipping at everybody, bothering everybody, harassing the smaller firefish. So these two are down here in the sump for the moment. Um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is getting a, another smaller nano just uh, for these two guys right here. Um, just because, you know, I don't want them to spend their whole lives down in a sump. I mean, they're, they're perfectly fine down there and it's, you know, still the same water. They're fine and they eat and they're healthy, but, you know, it's kind of lame for them to have to live their lives in the sump so anyways going back up to the tank I'm gonna get them a smaller tank just for them to and maybe put Houdini in there as well but um, yeah overall that's about what's going on with my saltwater tank guys um, got quite a bunch of new fish aquascapes change sand bed 
new MP10 powerhead. Yeah, everything's still still running smoothly. All my parameters check out, and um, once I actually get you know that fish, that fish, and maybe Houdini out, I'll probably be at a better stocking level. I am. I know I'm overstocked. You know my filtration's enough to keep up with it, but. Now I don't want any aggressiveness to come out due to the fact that some of the fish feel crowded. So eventually when I get a different tank, you know, I'll move some fish out of here. But overall, everything is looking good. So um, if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and put that down below in the comment section. And um, if you like the video, feel free to hit the like button. If you dislike it, hell, hit the dislike button. You know, let me hear your feedback. But that's about all I got for you guys today. Got to get ready to go to work, actually. So, um... You'll have a good one. Later, y'all.